Ernest Edward Ernie Kovacs was an American comedian, actor, and writer. Kovacs uninhibited, often ad-libbed, and visually experimental comedic style came to influence numerous television comedy programs for years after his death in an automobile accident. Many shows, such as Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In, Saturday Night Live, Monty Python, The Uncle Floyd Show, Captain Kangaroo, Sesame Street and The Electric Company are credited with having been influenced by Kovacs. Chevy Chase acknowledged Kovacs' influence and thanked him during his acceptance speech for his Emmy Award for Saturday Night Live. On or off screen, Kovacs could be counted on for the unexpected. From having marmosettes as pets to wrestling a Jaguar on his live Philadelphia television show. When working at WABC as a morning drive radio personality and doing a mid-morning television show for NBC, Kovacs disliked eating breakfast alone while his wife, Edie Adams, was sleeping in after her Broadway performances. His solution was to hire a taxi driver to come into their apartment with his own key and make breakfast for them both, then take Ernie to the WABC studios. While Kovacs and Adams received Emmy nominations for Best Performances in a Comedy Series in 1957, his talent was not formally recognized until after his death. The 1962 Emmy for Outstanding Electronic Camera Work in the Directors Guild Award came a short time after his fatal accident. A quarter century later, he was inducted into the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences Hall of Fame. Kovacs also has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for his work in television. In 1986, the Museum of Television and Radio presented an exhibit of Kovacs' work called The Vision of Ernie Kovacs. The Pulitzer Prize-winning television critic, William Henry III, wrote for the museum's booklet. Kovacs was more than another wide-eyed, self-ingratiating clown. He was television's first significant video artist, early life and career. Kovacs' father Andrew emigrated from Hungary at age 13. He worked as a policeman, restaurateur, and bootlegger, the last so successfully that he moved his wife Mary, and sons Tom and Ernie, into a 20-room mansion in the better part of Trenton. Though a poor student, Kovacs was influenced by his Trenton Central High School drama teacher, Harold Van Kirk, and received an acting scholarship at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in 1937 with Mr. Van Kirk's help. The end of Prohibition and the Depression brought hard financial times to the family. When Kovacs began drama school, all he could afford was a fifth-floor walk-up apartment on West 74th Street in New York City. During this time, he managed to see a lot of grade B movies. Admission was only a dime. Many of these films were the spark of his routines later on. A 1938 local newspaper photo shows Kovacs as a member of the Prospect Players, not yet wearing his trademark moustache. Like any aspiring actor, Kovacs used his class vacation time to pursue roles in summer stock companies. While working in Vermont in 1939, he became so seriously ill with pneumonia and pleurisy that his doctors didn't expect him to survive. Over the next year and a half, his comedic talents emerged as he entertained both doctors and patients with his antics during stays at several hospitals. While hospitalized, Kovacs developed a lifelong love and understanding of classical music through the gift of a radio, which he kept tuned to WQXR. He took work as a cigar salesman, which was the beginning of a lifelong habit. Kovacs' first paid entertainment work came in 1941, as a disc jockey on Trenton's WTTM radio. He spent the next nine years with WTTM, becoming the station's director of special events along the way. In this position he did things like trying to see what it was like to be run over by a train and broadcasting from the cockpit of a plane for which he took flying lessons. 
Kovacs was also involved in local theatre. A news clipping from a local paper ran a photo and the news that he was doing some directing for the Trenton Players Guild in early 1941. The Trentonian, a local weekly newspaper, offered Kovacs a column in June 1945. He called it Kovacs Unlimited. Start in television, showing up at NBC's Philadelphia affiliate, WPTZ, for an audition wearing a barrel and short Scott Kovacs his first television job in January 1950. His first show was Pick Your Ideal, a fashion and promotional program for the Ideal Manufacturing Company. Before long, Kovacs was also the host of Deadline for Dinner and Now You're Cooking, shows featuring tips from local chefs. When Kovacs' guest chef did not show up in time to go on the air, he offered a recipe for eggs scarvoke. Hosting these shows soon led to a program called Three to Get Ready, named for WPTZ Channel 3 spot on the dial. Premiering in November 1950, Three to Get Ready was groundbreaking, because it was the first regularly scheduled early morning show in a major television market, predating NBC's Today by over a year. Prior to this, it had been assumed that no one would watch television at such an early hour. While the show was billed as early morning news and weather, Kovacs provided this and more in an original manner. When rain was in the weather forecast, Kovacs would get on a ladder and pour water down on the staff member reading the report. Goats were auditioned for a local theatre performance and tiny women appeared to walk up his arm. Kovacs also went outside of the studio for some of his sketches, running through a downtown Philadelphia restaurant in a gorilla suit in one, and looking into a construction pit saying it was deep enough to see to China, when a man in Chinese clothing popped up, said a few words in the language, and ran off. Despite its popularity, the weekly prop budget for the show was just $15. Kovacs once asked his viewers to send unwanted items to Channel 3, they filled the station's lobby. The only character no one ever saw inspired more gifts. He was Howard, the world's strongest ant. From the time of his WPTZ debut, Howard received over 30,000 gifts from Kovacs viewers, including a mink-lined swimming pool. Kovacs began his early eyeball fraternal and marching society while doing three to get ready. There were membership cards with bylaws and ties. The password was a favorite phrase of Kovacs, it's been real. Kovacs continued the EFMS on his morning show when he moved to WCBS, New York in 1952. The success of Three to Get Ready proved that people did indeed watch early morning television and was one of the factors that led NBC to create the Today Show. WPTZ did not begin broadcasting today when it premiered on January 14. 1952, network pressure caused the station to drop three to get ready for it at the end of March of that year. In early 1952, Kovacs was also doing a late morning show for WPTZ called Kovacs on the Corner. Kovacs would walk through an imaginary neighborhood, talking with various characters such as Pete the Cop and Luigi the Barber. As with three to get ready, there were some special segments. Swap time was one of them. Viewers could bring their unwanted items to the WPTZ studios to trade them live on the air with Kovacs. The show made its debut on January 4, 1952, with Kovacs losing creative control of the program soon after it was on the air. Kovacs on the Corner was short-lived. It ended on March 28, 1952 along with Three to Get Ready. Kovacs then moved on to WCBS-TV, New York with a local morning show and a later network one. While both programs were cancelled, Kovacs lost his local morning program for the same reason as three to get ready the airtime was taken by the station's network in 1954. Visual Humor and Characters at WPTZ, Kovacs began using the ad-libbed and experimental style that would become in his reputation, including video effects, superimpositions, reverse polarities and scanning, and quick blackouts. 
He was also noted for abstraction and carefully timed non-sequitur gags and for carefully allowing the so-called fourth wall to be breached. Kovacs cameras commonly showed his viewers activity beyond the boundaries of the show set, including crew members and outside the studio itself. Kovacs also liked talking to the off-camera crew and even introduced segments from the studio control room. He frequently made use of accidents and happenstance, incorporating the unexpected into his shows. One of Kovacs' Philadelphia broadcasts included a homeless man who sought shelter inside the TV studio. Kovacs invited him onto the set, where he slept for the duration of the telecast, but nonetheless was introduced on camera to the audience's sleeping Schwartz. Kovacs was once knocked out when a pie in the face still had the plate under it. Kovacs' love of spontaneity extended to his crew, who would occasionally play on air pranks on him to see how he would react. During one of his NBC shows, Kovacs was appearing as the inept magician Matzo Heppel White. The sketch called for the magician to frequently hit a gong, which was the signal for a sexy female assistant to bring out a bottle and shot glass for a quick snort of alcohol. Stagehand substituted real liquor for the iced tea normally used in the skit. Kovacs realized that he would be called upon to drink a shot of liquor for each successive gong. He pressed on with the sketch and was quite inebriated by the end of the show. Kovacs helped develop camera tricks still common almost 50 years after his death. His character Eugene sat at a table to eat his lunch, but as he removed items one at a time from a lunchbox, he watched them inexplicably roll down the table into the lap of a man reading a newspaper at the other end. When Kovacs poured milk from a thermos bottle, the stream flowed in a seemingly unusual direction. Never seen on television before, the secret was using a tilted set in front of a camera tilted at the same angle. He constantly sought new techniques and used both primitive and improvised ways of creating visual effects that would later be done electronically. One innovative construction involved attaching a kaleidoscope made from a toilet paper roll to a camera lens with cardboard and tape and setting the resulting abstract images to music. Another was a soupkin with both ends removed fitted with angled mirrors. Used on a camera and turning it could put Kovacs seemingly on the ceiling. An underwater stunt involved inveterate cigar smoker Kovacs sitting in an easy chair, reading his newspaper and somehow smoking his cigar. Removing it from his mouth, Kovacs was able to exhale a puff of white smoke, all while floating underwater. The trick, the smoke, was a small amount of milk which he filled his mouth with before submerging. Kovacs repeated the effect for a Dutch Masters commercial on his ABC game show, Take a Good Look. One of the special effects he employed made it appear as if he was able to look through his assistant, Barbara Loden's head. The illusion was performed by placing a black patch on Loden's head and standing her against a black background while one studio camera was trained on her. A second one photographed Kovacs who used the studio monitor to position himself exactly so that his eye would appear to be looking through a hole in her head. He also developed such routines as an all-gorilla version of Swan Lake, a poker game set to Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, The Silent Show, in which Eugene interacts with the world accompanied solely by music and sound effects, parodies of typical television commercials and movie genres and various musical segments with everyday items moving in sync to music. A popular recurring sketch was the Nairobi Trio. Three Derby-hatted apes miming mechanically and rhythmically to the tune of Robert Maxwell's Solfeggio. Kovacs used extended sketches and mood pieces or quick blackout gags lasting only seconds. Some could be expensive, such as his famous used car salesman routine with a jalopy and a breakaway floor. It cost $12,000 to produce the six-second gag. He was one of the first television comedians to use odd fake credits and comments between the legitimate credits and, at times, during his routines. Kovacs reportedly disliked working in front of a live audience, as was the case with the shows he did for NBC in the 1950s. 
he found the presence of an audience distracting, and those in the seats frequently did not understand some of the more elaborate visual gags and special effects, which could only be appreciated by watching studio monitors instead of the stage. Like many comedians of the era, Kovacs created a rotation of recurring roles. In addition to the silent Eugene, his most familiar characters were the fey, lisping poet Percy Dove Tonsils, and the heavily accented German disc jockey Wolfgang von Sauerbrunnen. Mr. Question Man, who answered viewer queries, was a satire on the long-run radio series The Answer Man. Others included horror show host Auntie Gruesome, bumbling magician Matt Zohepel White, Frenchman Pierre Ragu, and Miklo Smolner, the sardonic Hungarian host of a cooking show. The Miklos character wasn't always confined to a kitchen. Kovacs performed a parody of the Howdy Doody show with Buffalo Miklos as the host. Poet Percy Dove Tonsils can be found playing Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata on a disappearing piano and as a master detective on the private, I private eye presentation of the U.S. Deal Hour on CBS March 8, 1961. On the same show, the Nairobi trio abandons their instruments for a safe cracking job, still with a background of solfeggio, but speaking. Two of the three appear in an outer space sketch. Kovacs became a regular on NBC Radio's Monitor beginning in late 1958, often using his Mr. Question Man character in his radio monologues. Kovacs never hesitated to lampoon those considered institutions of radio and television. In April 1954, he started the late-night talk show, The Ernie Kovacs Show, on Doom on Television Network's New York flagship station, WABD. Stage, screen, and radio notables often dropped by as guests. Archie Bleer, head of Cadence Records, came to chat one evening. Blea had been the longtime orchestra leader for Arthur Godfrey's radio and television shows. He had been fired by Godfrey the year before along with fellow cast member Julius La Rosa. When it was discovered Blea's record company had a contract with La Rosa without Godfrey's knowledge. Blea and Kovacs were shown in split screen, with Kovacs wearing a red wig, headphones, and playing a ukulele in a Godfrey imitation, while talking with his guest. Kovacs' television programs included Three to Get Ready, It's Time for Ernie, Ernie and Kovacsland, The Ernie Kovacs Show, a twice-a-week job filling in for Steve Allen as host of The Tonight Show on Mondays and Tuesdays, and game shows Gamble on Love, One Minute Please, Time Will Tell, and Take a Good Look. Kovacs was also the host of the program, Silence Please, which brought silent films to network television, with serious discussion about the films and their stars. Kovacs had a short stint as a celebrity panelist on What's My Line, but took his responsibilities less than seriously, often eschewing a legitimate question for the sake of a laugh. An example, industrialist Henry J. Kaiser, the founder of the automobile company, was the program's mystery guest. Previous questioning had established that the mystery guest's name was synonymous with an automobile brand. Kovacs asked, Are you, and this is just a wild guess, but are you Abraham Lincoln? A reference to the Ford Motor Company's brand of luxury automobile. When Kovacs gave an interview admitting that he was absent from the show when he wanted to go out for dinner on a Sunday, his stint on the panel show was over. TV specials He also did several television specials, including the famous silent show, featuring his character, Eugene, the first all-pantomime primetime network program. After the breakup of the Dean Martin-Jerry Lewis partnership, NBC offered Lewis the opportunity to host his own 90-minute color TV special. Lewis opted to take only 60 minutes, leaving the network 30 minutes to fill. No one wanted this time slot, but Kovacs was willing to have it. The program contained no spoken dialogue and contained only sound effects and music. Starring Kovacs as the mute, Chaplin-like character, Eugene, the program contained surreal sight gags.
Kovacs developed the Eugene character during the fall of 1956 when hosting The Tonight Show. Expectations were high for the Lewis program, but it was Kovacs' special that received the most attention. Kovacs received his first movie offer, had a cover story in Life magazine, and received the Sylvania Award that year. In 1961, Kovacs and his co-director, Joe Behar, were recipients of the Directors Guild of America Award for a second version of this program over the ABC network. A series of monthly half-hour specials for ABC in 1961-62 is often considered his best television work. Shot on videotape using new editing and special effects techniques, it won a 1962 Emmy Award. Kovacs and co-director Behar also won the Directors Guild of America Award for an Ernie Kovacs special based on the earlier silent Eugene program. Kovacs' last ABC special was aired posthumously on January 23, 1962. Dutch Masters became well known in the late 1950s and early 1960s for its sponsorship of various television projects of Ernie Kovacs. The company allowed Kovacs total creative control in the creation of their television commercials for his programs and specials. He produced a series of non-speaking television commercials for Dutch Masters during the run of his Take a Good Look television series which was praised by both television critics and viewers. What made Kovacs unique may also have been what made him a hard sell to television viewers. While praised by critics, Kovacs rarely had a highly rated show. The Museum of Broadcast Communications says, It is doubtful that Ernie Kovacs would find a place on television today. He was too zany, too unrestrained, too undisciplined. Perhaps Jack Gould of the New York Times said it best for Ernie Kovacs. The fun was in trying. Other shows had greater success while using elements of Kovacs' style. Luffin producer George Schlatter was married to actress Jolene Brand, who had appeared in Kovacs' comic troupes over the years and had been a frequent participant in his pioneering sketches. Luffin made frequent use of the quick blackout gags and surreal humor that marked many Kovacs' projects. Another link was a young NBC staffer, Bill Wendell, Kovacs' usual announcer and sometimes a sketch participant. From 1980 to 95, Wendell was the announcer for David Letterman, whose show and style of humor were greatly influenced by Kovacs.